Three parameter tricks you wish you knew earlier. Number one, use min and max values to ensure your parameters stay within an expected range. Working on this tea kettle design, I don't want it to be smaller than 170 millimeters or larger than 200 millimeters. Changing the parameter outside this range will break the model or make the model larger than desired. Create a new user parameter with your desired parameter name, and I like to add the word limit to the end. For the value, we'll start with min in parentheses. The min and max functions require two expressions in the following format. Inside the minimum, we'll place the maximum value of 200 millimeters and a semicolon, and then we need to define the minimum value within the max function. We'll write max and parentheses followed by 170 millimeters. Before the closing parentheses, we need to define our user parameter that will rely on this min max function. In this case, my kettle height parameter, followed by the closing parentheses. Note that the min and max values appear to be switched. Writing it this way ensures that anything over the maximum desired value will use the max of 200 millimeters, while anything under the min value will use the minimum of 170 millimeters. Finally, edit the original parameter in your sketch or modeling feature. Changing the parameter beyond the min and max will now prevent us from destroying the model. Notice how the parameter doesn't update past the min or max value. Number two, you can create parameters on the fly while defining sketch dimensions or modeling features. Simply type the desired parameter name, the equal sign, and the desired value. Note there are no spaces between these. This can save a ton of time compared to opening the parameters dialog each time. However, it's important to note that this creates a model parameter and it will automatically be listed in the favorite section of the parameters dialog. Parameters created on the fly will not be listed as user parameters. This is because model parameters are derived from the model while user parameters are created without a sketch or modeling feature. Both user parameters and model parameters are essentially the same and can reference one another. The one downside to parameters on the fly is that the original dimension input will not indicate that it's a parameter unless you hover over the value. If you change the original, it will allow you to update other dimensions, including sketch dimensions and modeling features. For example, I can edit the wall thickness of the shell command used in the creation of the lid. Updating either the user parameter or the original shell command will drive this value. Number three, use parameters to round to a specific fraction. This one is for all the woodworking and CNC folks who work with stock that comes in increments of an eighth inch, quarter inch, or any other inch increment. Start by setting up three parameters. Part length will represent the desired length of your part. A parameter called finish will serve as the clearance or extra material you need for facing, sanding, or finishing the part. Third, a parameter called rounding will serve as the increment that Fusion 360 rounds to. This is the variable we'll test at the end. I like to use rounding as lowercase round is reserved as an expression that will round to the closest whole number. You will then use the ceiling function written as CEIL parentheses. Within this, we'll place the part length plus finish in parentheses divided by rounding and another parentheses. We'll then place this entire thing within parentheses so we can multiply it by rounding. Change the rounding parameter to any desired fraction and the stock length will round up to it regardless of your finish parameter. There's also a few more parameter functions available in Fusion 360, including random, pi, and more. Check them out in the video description. Special thanks to all the new patrons and those who bought me coffee over the last few weeks. If you learned anything with my videos, consider donating to my mission of making cat education accessible to everyone. Be sure to subscribe and check out this next video with workflows that you should know.